Hey, how you doing? This is Cooking with Dave again. Remember, I am the world's greatest chef, because it says so right here on my apron. And y'all know my apron wouldn't lie to us. You know, I've had this apron since February 1986. So we're talking about 21 years of apron. You know, if you've got the apron 21 years old and it says world's greatest chef, then it must be true. Anyway, today we're going to cook uh, fried chicken pot pie. That's right, fried chicken pot pie. My sister asked me, how come you fry a chicken before you make a pot pie? You know, what's the importance? The importance is fried chicken, you know, we fried chicken, I like to do my fried chicken video with Italian seasoning, with garlic and onion, with salt and with pepper and everything. And, and those, those spices get in that chicken, that flavor, and that fried chicken flavor is, is the whole basis of, of our pot pie. It's going to taste like fried chicken flavor, and that's what we want. We want to bite into our, fry, our pot pie and think, hey, that tastes like fried chicken. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to taste like fried chicken. It's going to be very good. We're going to use celery. We're going to use a green pepper. We're going to use some garlic. We're going to use some onions. We're going to use some leftover fried chicken that I have. What you do with leftover fried chicken, you make soup out of it or pot pie. And what we're going to make pretty much, in, 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 unless you're thickening it up, you can eat like a soup. We're going to make it kind of thick to go inside our pot pie, but if you want to make it thin, put a little more chicken broth, a little more liquid in it, it's really just going to be a good fried chicken and potato soup. And we're going to put that inside some pie crust, and uh, I don't believe in plain, I use easy pie, pie crust, and you unroll it, it's pie crust. I saw somebody else make a video of, of a pot pie, and they seemed to think the more important was the pie crust than the inside of the pie. I tend to believe that the inside is more important than the pie crust because that's where your flavors come from. All your flavors are going to come from what you put inside your pot pie. So we're going to make some fried chicken pot pie, celery, potatoes, pepper, chicken stock, leftover fried chicken, onions, garlic, of course. So let me show you how we put it together. Alright, we're going to take a whole chopped up onion and put it right on top of that butter we got going on there melting. You'll see that butter melting? You can use whatever kind of oil you want. You can use butter, you can use olive oil, you can use baking grease. As long as we have some oil that's going to make these onions start to sweat, start to caramelize. Because you really don't, you know, you get all the flavor, most of the flavor comes out of these onions. You start cooking them, you start cooking them, and it makes my eyes start burning. Woo! My eyes can't even take it. Then we're going to put two or three tablespoons of garlic, you don't know how we do, in there. We're going to sweat them out. I got it too high, I didn't turn it down to medium. I had it on high trying to get that butter. I'm going to put some pepper on it. Put a little pepper. Okay. Look at our onions are sweating out there nicely. Okay, now whenever I, I had a little more butter to this because I thought maybe I didn't have enough to sweat out my vegetables. I'm going to make sure I sweat out of my vegetables my root vegetables in this particular thing. Most soups that I make, you can find out, I always put onions and garlic, of course. Pretty much everything I make is onions and garlic. But then I come back, when I'm making a soup, or a pot pie, or a casserole, something like that, I'm gonna come back and put some green pepper. Put them in there. If you like it, if it's a vegetable, you can put it in this. The best thing about pot pies is, it's pretty much just a bunch of vegetables, flavored with chicken and uh, potatoes, then uh, some celery. So I added about, I don't know, cup of celery, about a cup of peppers, and then get some green in, up in there. And remember I just added a little more butter because I think I had enough. I want to make sure I sweat all these out nice and good. And we get that flavor, that butter in there, put a little more butter in there. And we get all that flavor going on. And then, all right, now if we get our vegetables all sweating and starting to put out that flavor we want to put out, cut it with the butter, caramelize. I'm going to let them move a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and throw some chicken broth on that. Chicken stock. Everybody use chicken base better than bullion. It's actually ch real chicken base. I'm gonna put about uh, two teaspoons in two cups of water for my chicken base. About two cups of water, two teaspoons of chicken base. You can use whatever chicken stock you got. You can use chicken broth, whatever you got. You can use water if you want to. If you use water, just add some salt and pepper to it. No big deal. This is good though, we have a little chicken stock. Chicken stock is always going to hook us up. We put it right in there. And we start those flavors of simmering. And we don't want to boil this, we just want to simmer it. We're just going to cook it on medium. Right, we're going to bring this to a simmer. I'm going to go ahead and add my potatoes to it. 
Um, now, if you cut up potatoes, you know, we just cube them up. Nobody does potatoes. And see, I keep them in water. Because keep your potatoes in water after you cut them up. Because as soon as you start cutting up a potato, and you let it sit on the counter like that, it starts losing its starch. All that white stuff on the counter, you come back and clean up after you clean up your cutting board, and you see all that white stuff that you left behind on your cutting board? That was actually starch from the potato. And that's going to happen when you cut them up. Nothing you can do about that. But as soon as you cut them up, go ahead and put them in some water. It's a bowl of water or whatever. And, and if you keep the, your potatoes in the water, it will keep the starch from leaving your potatoes as quick. It's still going to leave your potatoes, just not as quick. We want to keep that starch in our potatoes because a lot of our flavor is going to come from that starch from the potatoes. And look at that. See what we got going on there? Bunch of potatoes getting all nice with the garlic and the onions and the celery and the peppers and the salt and the pepper and the chicken broth and the potatoes. Oh man, this thing is just becoming something. Look at that. Now like I said, if you want to, you can fix yourself a, a soup the same way. This is exactly how you cook soup. And you can take whatever you want, whatever you got in your refrigerator, put it in here and call it soup. We just throw a lid on it and then wait for the potatoes to get soft. Okay, here we are. I've been cooking my potatoes about 20, 25 minutes. My um, potatoes are soft. I can take one out and I can smush it on the side. See that? So it turns on, it's all soft. So that means we're just about ready. Everything looking good. What I did was I took four pieces of fried chicken. They were just bone, uh, they had bone in them, but they were skinless breasts. And I took the bone out, you know, deboned all the chicken, leftover fried chicken. And I'm just going to put it straight into my pot pie filling. But boom. And like I said, you can make a soup like this if you wanted to. This could be soup. I would just not make it as thick. I'm going to make it thick because I like a thick pie filling. So we're going to make it nice and thick for our pie filling. And I always cook too much of this, so I probably will have it left over. Now, I forgot earlier to put my carrots in. That's okay, because I'm using canned carrots, and canned carrots pretty much already cooked. So I can put them in right now along with my chicken. But boom Canned carrots. Put it in there with the chicken. And with the celery. And with the peppers, and the onion, and the garlic. See that? Now we have some color for our... Pop, pop. And to me, that's pretty much all the carrots are. Pretty much color. Because I don't really care for a carrot. But, you know, once you put it inside this, pretty much all going to taste the same. It's all going to taste like our mixture here. It's going to taste like our pot pie insides. Which, ooh, they're looking yummy. I think I'm going to try them. I can make sure that they are up to speed. But what I'll do now is I'll simmer this um, for about another 15 minutes. Let it come together with that fried chicken. <laughs> Let the flavor start getting throughout everything. All comes as one. And thicken up. I want it to be pretty thick inside of our pie. Okay, here we are back at our inside. Let's take a look at it. See what it looks like. Oh, it looks wonderful. Look at that. Oh, man. I might have to dip some of this up. And just eat it like a soup. I'm telling look at that. Mmm. It's just chicken soup. That's all that is right there. Chicken soup. And remember, you can put anything in this you like. If you like more vegetables, corn, peas, lima beans, I mean, you name it. If you like it, put it in here. If you think, hey, well, I'd like to have that in my pot pie, put it in there. Now, if you're not happy with the thickness of your, your, your pie insides here, you can add some cornstarch and thicken it up. Or if you want to, you can mash some of these some sweet potato you can mash it up in there and then that also will thicken up your sauce but i think this is about right this is a little bit thin see it looks a little thin almost like a soup but if i was going to eat this for a soup i probably would add some more chicken stock and thin it up a little more but this is about the thickness we want because we're actually going to cook this thing for about 30 45 minutes in the oven and it's going to you know soak a little bit up into our crust so it's going to thicken up on its own a little bit and we want it to remain juicy so there's no reason to worry about you can put it in a little bit thin not real thin but like that i don't know is that too thin i don't think so 